What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, hey. Chief. Doing good. Man, good. today you? it is a great day for Chief <laughs> Chat, right? You got good it. Good to see you guys. All right, awesome, awesome. So today we have an outstanding guest that is one of our internal exchange family members and my brother from another mother in the Pacific. Without further ado, Julie, do you mind introducing today's guest? Chief, you are right. We do have one of our own today, and we are so excited to have him with us. So he's one of about 30 active duty service members assigned to the exchange, and he is the focal point for communications between exchange leadership and Army and Air Force active duty, Guard, Reserve, and family members in the Pacific region. So once COVID stops, he will be traveling to Army and Air Force installations throughout the Pacific region to present updates on exchange activities and also provide feedback on issues affecting our customers. Please help us give a warm welcome to Sergeant Major Wayne Crudup. Hey, hey. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. <laughs> Sergeant Major. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And for thank you so much, sir, for taking time out to join us. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with Sergeant Major Crude up there. And now's a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not al already following us, you should. So you'll know who's coming up next on Chief Chat. Man, so Sergeant Major Crude up, man. It's, it's awesome to see you today, brother. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing, man? I'm doing wonderful, man. And uh, can you let our audience know where you where you calling in from? I'm calling from the... Great country of Japan, Okinawa. Okinawa, man. What time is it out there? It's uh 2200 at night. Oh man, well, I'm glad you gave up some some rest to to, to uh <laughs> <laughs> to get us up to give us show some love on Chiefs Chat. Hey, anything for the team. Oh, I love that. You're you're one of us already. That's so great. Um, so Sergeant Major, you are the Chief Osby of the Pacific region, and you, I know you're about two months into your assignment at the exchange. Can you talk to us a little bit about your role and like what countries are in your area of responsibility, and then how you help make a difference to our heroes assigned overseas? So the countries that fall under my uh, responsibility are Japan, Korea, Hawaii, Kwajalein, uh, Guam, American Samoa. Um, and so my, my mission is to build a relationship between the command teams and AFES to help the, help the command teams understand what AFES can do for them and their, and their units and just be the voice of the, of the service members in the region. All good stuff. So can you tell us about yourself and your Army career? So where are you from? How long have you been serving? And what led you to the life of serving? I'm from a uh, small town in North Carolina, Bun, North Carolina, Wildcat Pride. Uh, I've been in the Army for about 22 mm -hmm. years. Uh, I'm stationed at Fort Bragg, Korea, Fort Carson, Fort Irwin, Fort Hood, and now uh, Okinawa, Japan. Um, I joined the military because uh, I just didn't want to go to college, but I knew I couldn't <laughs> stay home. So uh, my mom was, was going to let me stay at home, so she told me I had to do something. So I, I was actually supposed to join the Air Force. And the day I went to the uh, recruiter station, the Air Force recruiter wasn't there, and Army swooped me up, and here I am 22 years later. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, those, oh. air, air, those Air Force recruiters, man, they, they, take long lunch, <laughs> they take long lunch breaks, man, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chief has a similar story. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the thing is, is yeah, pe people are, are looking for them, uh, and not more so looking for other recruiters. So. You know, they, they have a lot of folks lined up at their door trying to get in the Air Force. I will tell you, my son is, he just turned 17, and I've been getting texts from the National Guard about him joining. So I'm like, wow. Even before he was 17, I'm like, they're really needing some folks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised the Marine recruiter, because Marine recruiter started <laughs> getting me at like 16. Like, they, they started really early. And so. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I avoided the Marine recruiter. Like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I tried to avoid him, but he ended up uh, putting my paycheck against my McDonald's paycheck and then uh, 
Well, he put the, he put <laughs> the pay, tactic. He put the pay scale against my McDonald's uh, uh, pay stub, and yeah. And next thing you know, I was duck walking in the MEPS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, can you tell us uh, one of your favorite assignments or your memorable moments uh, while you've been serving? So, I mean, not to sound cliche, but I like all my assignments for the most part. I'm, I'm a firm believer that the, the people will make the assignments, it's not the actual locations, it's actual people in those locations. And, I, and I've had, uh, I've been lucky to serve with amazing people um, throughout my career. But if I had to choose one assignment that was uh, my favorite, <laughs> I would actually say Fort Irwin, California. Um, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fort Irwin. Um, I liked it because uh, I had a set schedule. I knew when I worked, I knew when I was off. And when I was off, I was off. So I was able to explore and travel to do, um, do things like go to San Diego, go to LA, go to Vegas, of course, and uh, just do things like that and just get away from being a, a soldier for that little bit of time that I was off. So it was, it was pretty amazing. Oh, that's a good perspective. I don't, that's, I, I like that. I like that answer. I'm, and I'm glad you had that experience. And I, we, now you um, are on record saying that Fort Irwin was your favorite. So just <laughs> take, <laughs> take that with you. Um, so so the, o, Okinawa's coming a close second right now. Trust me. <laughs> awesome. Very good. <laughs> so the exchange is a unique retailer and our capabilities, that's where we really shine overseas and we deliver that taste of home to people serving far from family and friends. So if you are a soldier or an airman assigned to a post or air base in the Pacific, what can you expect from the exchange? Um, you said it. Um, it. It gives us a little taste of home that we're missing being overseas. And uh, give us those, those creatures comforts, you know, from um, the exchange has everything from body wash to Jordans, you know, so it's just <laughs> a matter of uh, just going, and get, going in there and seeing what they have and um, just get finding your little piece to make you feel more like you're back home. Um, and then as far as the AFI's food restaurants, we got from Burger King to Subway, Taco Bell, um, and then some locations have chilies. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. From Body Wash to Jordans, that's going to be our new marketing tagline. I like that. I like it. I like it. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you, look, if you can't find it, Body Wash to Jordans and everything in between, man, that, that covers the whole spectrum. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great. I love that. So you came to your assignment right in the middle of typhoon season. Can you talk to us about the steps the exchange takes to ensure service members have what they need during an emergency? So like you said, we're in typhoon season right now. So the exchange orders um, extra stuff like the batteries, the flashlights, even generators to make sure the soldiers, the service members have those items readily available when we do go on a uh, T-storm watch for uh, the incoming typhoons. So like right now, you know, we're under a typhoon watch right now for tomorrow. So it's uh, it's, it's very uh, refreshing and relieving to know that the exchange has the stuff we need in case we lose power or uh, for a number of days or we go to flooding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, and we and we hope that the typhoon doesn't do too much. Uh, you know, I hope it passes by and y'all just get a little rain and, and maybe a little bit of wind, uh, but not, nothing too too crazy. Yeah, I'll begin to think I was bad luck. This is my uh, fourth one. And I've been here for a month and a half, you know. <laughs> well, make sure you get those typhoons out of the way before I get over there. Cause, uh, I'm yeah, going to say I'll, one I'll just for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, so uh, kind of like me, you're fairly new to the your role at the exchange. Uh, what is your impression so far of the associates and the support the team provides uh, overseas? Uh, they're awesome. Um, well, what I, what I found with the associates here that they're real dedicated to the, to the AFES team and AFES is dedicated to them and, and one, they love their job. I have not met an angry or disgruntled employee the entire time I've been here and, I, and I'm going to visit just about all the locations here in Okinawa and um, everyone's always respectful, just happy to be here and um, they have uh, longevity. There's people who's worked in the exchange longer than I've been alive, you know, from I met a gentleman that worked in a bakery. He said he worked in the bakery for 45 years. Wow. Like, wow. That's, that, that, awesome. that's amazing. You stay mm -hmm. with an organization that long, you know, it just, and they want to be here, you know, so it's, it's, it's amazing. 
Yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's a loyal loyal employee. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, commit. Yeah. So. So COVID nineteen, it's made twenty twenty pretty challenging for everyone. But we want to focus on the positive for a moment. So, what's one good thing that's happened to you during twenty twenty? Uh, one good thing happened to me in twenty twenty. Actually, uh, <laughs> coming to this assignment. I, fi I finally got out of Texas, so <laughs> <laughs> I was finally able to travel. So uh, just coming here was actually uh, the best thing to happen because uh, I, I was getting kind of tired of Texas, just sitting there for uh, the past six months, couldn't go nowhere. Yeah, and, you know, mm -hmm. so being able to PCS actually PCS was a blessing, and uh, I'm really glad that I was able to get this assignment. So yeah, your last assignment was Fort Hood. Yes, Fort Hood. Okay. Yeah, four years of Fort Hood. Oh wow, that is yeah. that is a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, yes. And, yes. That's the longest I ever spent in one location. And you had a nice exchange there. That's one of my favorites. Yes. We and did. it's close for us. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you definitely so, take take the small things for granted uh, with during COVID, and so just PCS and you know even for me PCS and felt felt good as well because we, we've been on lockdown we can't do anything at the base where we were at we couldn't go to restaurants and and yes. we had to go pick up to go and all kind of other stuff so just being able to, to travel even though I'm traveling to another bait uh, location that that just made me feel a little bit better so I understand where you're coming from with that yeah and even even though the PC, PCS was stressful itself it was just good to get it done just so I could say I'm, I'm leaving I'm traveling I'm going yeah. somewhere you know yeah, yeah. it's so <laughs> great <laughs> <sighs> totally feel ya. Totally feel ya. So the exchange is focused on helping soldiers and airmen achieve a BFIT lifestyle. What does that mean to you? What does BFIT mean to you? Uh, BFIT to me, especially right now in this COVID environment where, you know, most of the gyms are, are uh, cutting back on hours, cutting back, cutting back on capacity and uh, even closed, is still being able to take the time and, and get your fitness in uh, whether it's watching YouTube videos or doing your own workouts in your home or outside or uh, just doing something to be active. And um, the one thing the exchange has it does that they have a great be fit section inside the exchange where they have all the products that the soldiers or the service members are looking for to help them meet the, um, the, the goals they want. So uh, the be fit to me, you just have to be able to do it, especially right now when it's hard, that hard to do it. You don't, because you're at home, that's my couch. I could work out, but I'm gonna sit on my couch, you know? <laughs> so it's just being, having that, that intestinal fortitude to go ahead and just knock it out anyway. Mm -hmm. And then part of staying fit is, you know, staying mentally resilient as well and making sure you have time to unwind and decompress and kind of just de-stress. But what do you like to do in your free time when you're not working and so that you can build up that mental resiliency? Uh, so I like to lift weights. I haven't done it since I've been here. It's just hard with the trying to catch the right time to go to the gym when it's not too crowded. But uh, other than that, I uh, I'm a, I watch movies. Uh, I play Madden and Call of Duty. So <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> yeah, we probably taking you from the headset right now. Uh, the, you call oh, nah, nah, I was, I'm actually watching Cobra Kai right now on uh, Netflix. Okay. Mm. We've been having that on in our house too. My husband's been watching it and I was like, what is this? He's like, Karate Kid. I'm like, oh, okay. But he's like, but told from the other guy. And I'm like, oh, all right. But I have not been watching, but sounds like you're like, it's people are really into it from what I'm gathering. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually pretty good. And, and you think about it when we was kids growing up, you know, Daniel Sam was the good guy. Oh and yeah. You're watching it from his point of view. Nah, Daniel was a bully. He was used to a real bully. <laughs> 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 Daniel was actually a good guy, you know? So yeah, oh, yeah. I, I actually <laughs> like the series. <laughs> there's, not, there's three sides to every story, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is true. Exactly. This is true. <laughs> awesome. So um, as a normal leader and exchange leader, I'm just really interested to hear your perspective on leadership. Uh, so if you, you got a, a, a younger, younger troop that comes up to you and they're moving into a leadership role or, you know, just get promoted to be an NCO, what kind of advice would you give them? I would tell them to be resilient. Be resilient, be approachable, and have pop. Pop is one of my terms I, I coined from my watching wrestling, WWE. It's oh, a yeah. power of positivity, <laughs> right? 
So you just have to be positive about everything. You, you find a positive, positive note, positive side of everything, and you can't go wrong. Um, especially in uh, with, in this environment we're in now with COVID, you know, it can easily get where you can get uh, stressed out, run down because you're teleworking, or if you are working, you're the only ones coming in, so you get real stressful. You just have to find the positive side. And to be a leader right now, you have to be approachable for your soldiers. Uh, I think some some leaders have lost that. Uh, lost that to where soldiers don't want to come to them and you lose that your soldiers don't come to you they, who they're going to go to and, and that's why and that's why we I think we have a lot of the uptick of uh, suicides and uh, behavioral problems within the military itself because soldiers aren't coming to the leaders anymore so you have to be approachable and you, know, you have to find a way to reach your soldiers that way yeah it's funny that you say WWE because when you say pop I'm thinking pop or get popped uh, <laughs> uh, but no, you, you're absolutely right. You have to, you have to be, uh, show people that you're human as a leader. Yes. And so, um, I, I, I know that once we, we get certain ranks and, and, and folks, you know, are, are, are already in awe that we're at that rank, but you got to show them that you're a human and show them that you, uh, you have, you make mistakes and, and be, uh, humble and, and humility, all that good stuff, man. So you made some great points and I, I totally agree with you. So um, before we wrap up, man, thank you so much for uh, sharing some time with us, uh, giving us your perspective uh, on, on the exchange, on, on leadership, on all these different topics. Uh, it was awesome advice that you gave us. Uh, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties watching with us. Uh, and thank what you thank you for what you do for the exchange in our military community. Hey, hey thank you for having me. This I, I I guess I made it now. I'm part of AFP for real. I'm on Chief <laughs> Chat, you know. <laughs> so uh, yes, I, 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 thank thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be a part of the team, and I'm here for whatever you need. Just just let me know. Yes, you are you are officially a C list celebrity. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <I made> it. <laughs> <laughs> just give us a little bit of credit, man. Come yeah, on, listen, we're, we're, we're making. <laughs> We're making our way up there, Julia. I tell you, we're going to take this thing on the road. We are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. We're going to start <laughs> shopping into some networks. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. And uh, you have a blessed day. Hey, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.